Hello and welcome to Cup of Tea with Gio and Gonzo. We're back with more transfer updates, transfer news, and a lot of bits and pieces happening around West Ham. I've got my cup of tea. Gonzo, you got your cup of tea? Got my cup of tea. It's too late now. So we've already started. It's not got enough sugar in it. Uh, but there we go. We will, we'll, we'll crack on. There's worse things in the world. I've got a plain white cup tonight to represent our plain boring transfer window so far. I thought I'd keep the theme of the transfers going to my cup as well so i've got my daughter's mug so i probably i probably won't won't show it to to everybody and <laughs> uh, well, we'll talk let's talk about uh the the newest transfer first the transfer link to, today which was southampton center back uh Jose Fonte, what do you make of that? I mean, there was a, the rumor was linking us to four million, but apparently Southampton went twelve million. I don't think they'll get twelve million. Um, but would you want him? No, and I hope I've said enough over the past few shows for people to know that I'm not just going to whinge for, and be sort of outraged for the sake of it. So I think it's easy just to look at every transfer and whinge about every single one. So I, I hope I've I've sort of you know not done that. Um, this one. I don't know why. I, don't, I just don't understand. I sort of wonder what Rhys Oxford, someone like that, would think about something like this. He's a, you know, it's, has he played? Um, he's, he's a bit of a journeyman, really, as, as by all intents and purposes. I don't think he's not a young man, is he? He's a, so it's a, it's just a very, very strange one. I'm not sure what he would bring to the table. I know Kiate's um, off at the moment. We've got Kiate can also play at centre-back. We've got Ginge sitting there. Or Bonner, not been the best of form, maybe. I think we bought Nordvite because he was a utility player, so he can play back there. And we, Rhys Oxford's just signed this, this new contract, so I'm not sure why we would want to sign a 4 million rated centre-back who's coming to the end of their careers. It just... Um, yeah, I'd be very, very disappointed if he if he came in. To be fair, if that if that was the um, extent of our ambitions, I think thirty three. I don't I, for a centre back. I wouldn't say thirty three is at the end of your career just yet. And um, it's that seems to be the position where you can get a couple more years extra compared to the rest of the team. Um, if it was four million, I'd take him tomorrow. Um, as much as I don't think we need a centre back, he's, maybe you can get a couple of really good years out of him for four million. I think it's a bargain. Um, I think. It would give Reese Oxford and Reese Burt the perfect mentor as well. Um, it would spell the end of James Collins, though, but that's not a bad thing, in my opinion. It could maybe throw Ogbonna's position at the club into into doubt, but he's not been in the greatest form, and maybe he does need competition because we don't really have much competition in the centre back um, area. I don't think. We, I know we've got Burke on loan, we've got Oxford, but take away Ogbonna and Reed. You've got James Collins, who's injury prone, really slow, and that's it, really. You've got, I know you named Kiati Norvite, but they're not really centre backs, and we're quite light in that area when you really think about it. And Fonte is—he won the Euros in the summer. He's captain of Southampton. He's—I think he's a fantastic centre back. I think him and V could make a really good partnership, and it would allow V to go back into playing left centre back as well. And um, while he's been doing really well at right centre back. Do be no harm, but for me, four million, yes, twelve million. I don't think they'll get that. Absolutely no. But somewhere in the middle, I'd be in the fence. But four million bargain for me. But do you not think though he's better than Ogbonna? Well, I think he might be better than Ogbonna this season. I don't think he's better than Ogbonna last season. No, I just think Ogbonna's in that sort of bit of a hole along with a lot of other players not playing as well, and particularly lay it lay the blame at Ogbonna's feet anymore and I'd lay the blame at Cresswell's feet a lot of them are underperforming um I just think it says that completely the wrong message I know what you say about mentor if they want mentor and they could get Reed to mentor them I just think it sends out completely the wrong signal to the young players that you know I mean it's the last thing they want is for the club to bring in someone else that's going to block their path for another couple of years so you know if they keep buying somebody that's a couple of years younger than the oldest centre back that we've got I, I don't know I just don't think it's uh, just don't think it's the way forward but, but but final word before we move on. But you told me that you wanted to see someone to come in that would in improve our first eleven. He would. Well, it was yeah. Um, I, 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 he's not really what I had in mind. To be perfectly honest with you, mate, was uh, was that I listen? Maybe I maybe I got suckered in by a lot of the talk at the start of the season. But I I was hoping we were going to progress as a club this season and start bringing in some players who are significantly better. And that just does not. 
it does not take i'm not impressed mate or snod grass talk and then this fonte i'm not impressed with all this I, we, we started off we did a transfer window before the start um, um we did a transfer show before the start um, about who we want and i i was saying oh we are quite fancy daniel sturridge crikey we're a million miles away from doing anything like that aren't we last season it's last summer i was after ben tech I thought, or maybe we'll get um redmond in as well because i thought he was a young exciting player listen we're not don't seem to be bringing in anyone proven we don't seem to be bringing in anyone at sort of england under 21s level either so i mean it's uh yeah it was just disappointing i read it and thought oh goodness sake is that the best we could do it might not be true obviously we are talking about rumors here it might just be a load of rubbish i hope i hope it is a load of rubbish well and two more rumors uh, is kind of they contradict themselves so we're gonna have to talk about them both at the same time one the sun tonight has just released an article an hour ago saying we've agreed a fee with Brentford for Scott Hogan, but there's another rumour going about, or I don't think it's in the paper yet, but it will be in the paper maybe tomorrow, is that we're pulling the plug on this Scott Hogan thing altogether because David Sullivan has question marks over his knees, uh, or his knee that has been operated on a couple of times. Um, I think it's hard to talk about this one now because we've got two contradicting stories. Now, the first one's true. There's no point talking about that one because we both were both a yes to Scott Hogan. We'd both be happy if we've agreed the fees. So I don't think there's much point going into that one. But if we've pulled the plug after getting a little bit worried about his knee, I think that's very naive of us because his knee wasn't a secret. Everyone, uh, it's, the world knows that he's had operations on it. So if you're bidding, bidding, and bidding, and going, then you just suddenly go, no, I don't want him because of his knee. I think, well, that's a bit stupid because you knew about his knee when you started bidding. Um, it would almost smack as an excuse for me that it's getting too expensive instead of saying it's too expensive. I'd go, nah, nah, nee, sorry, I'm out of here. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think if that was the case, then it would be because it was too expensive. So, as you say, everyone knows about his knee. So, uh, two cruciate knee ligament operations, which, for all intents and purposes, seems to have recovered from successfully. Um, now, I, th I think if he's obviously looking at it and thinking with that in mind, bearing in mind he has a history of injury, we'll pay 10 million. So maybe it is exactly as you say, actually, it's gone closer to 15, maybe it's 13, 14. And now uh, Mr. Sullivan saying, you know what, that, that's it. For somebody with an injury record, I'd rather not bother. Of course, he has the history because of the Charlie Austin comments. But actually, um, there's slightly more history than that and i wouldn't be surprised if he probably is thinking that he's damned if he doesn't damned if he doesn't because if he does sign him and it goes wrong and he collapses and he breaks down and everyone will say what you're doing is we had all this before you keep signing crocs look what happened with andy carroll that would certainly be said and i think if he doesn't sign him then we're, you know we're saying you're lacking ambition so um something needs to be done what all i know about it is and um I think there's less of a risk because I, I guess he won't be on the wages that Carol was on. So Carol was rumoured to be on 90 grand a week. Um, Hogan comes in, he's not going to be on anywhere near that. I'd imagine he'd be on 25,000 pound a week or something like that. So it, it whilst the, the transfer fee is, is not, not a small amount, is it? You know, 10 to 15 million. It, over the course of the, the contract, the, the wages are not too much. I, I just know one thing, and that's that I would be, let's say we signed him to crystal uh, going to the crystal palace game on saturday uh it would excite me to think okay we've got a new player we, we may well be having and starting with a new striker up front and i think a signing would actually give the the fans and probably the team around them a bit of a lift as well and i think we need a bit of a lift because it's, it's, we're getting a bit into the transfer window at the moment you know nothing's happened yeah i think i think the only thing i would say about the hogan fee i mean we spoke about it before but it's, even if it was 50 million, it's not 50 million hard cash. It'll be 9 million or something, and then a million if he plays this amount of games, a million if he scores this goal, a million if we win the FA Cup or something. So if he does break down, all goes tits. We wouldn't have spent 50 million. We would have spent 10 million or something. And I think I think the sticking point is that Brentford have to consider, given the fact that they've got to give 25% to Rochdale. And I think that's the mm. sticking point, really. They're trying to, they're obviously thinking, right, hang on, 10 million, I've got to give two and a half away. I'm only getting seven and a half here. So I can get why Brentford have been a bit sticky. But um, a lot of Premier League clubs want a striker right now, I think. And he's the only, well, not the only one, but he's one of the few smashing them in at a consistent rate in the Championship. He's going to be sought after. He's 24. Brentford are in the position of strength. Um, I'll be very disappointed if we pull the plug on this one, but I think we'll find out in the next 24 to 48 hours. Do you know where they are in the league? Do you know where Brentford are in the league? No, I think they're mid-table. I don't think they're getting relegated, but I don't think they're 
playoffs, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just uh, there. Yeah. But I'm disappointed. I'll be disappointed. But but I think when we do our next cup of tea, which will probably be Sunday night, if there's enough news, uh, maybe Sunday night, we might know for more on the Hogan thing by then. I think it's going to come clear over the next couple of days whether Scott Hogan's a yes or a no. Um, but let's talk about one guy who is more yesterday's news. And it's our player. And uh, I think this is actually the first time we spoke about one of our players this transfer window. Um, I don't think we've had to discuss ones yet. And that's Antonio. Antonio. Are you disappointed or are you scared about the link? No, I, because I don't think it's a true link. And I I just don't. It never struck me for a second as a Chelsea type player, particularly I mean, under this current regime. Antonio's full of running, he's full of endeavour, he, he's strong, he knows where the goal is, he arrives late into the box, he's, he can finish, I mean he's our top goal scorer, great in the air, but I don't see him as that sort of technical player in the way that Chelsea play, you know, he's not blessed with fantastic, he's not going to be you know, doing Cruyff turns and nutmegging everybody and doing all that sort of thing, so I, that's why I don't think the league is right, I think Antonio is playing at his level. We love him. We want him to stay. Um, there would be absolute murders, I've got to say as well, if we were to sell Antonio. Because we can argue about what was said um, from the owners at the end of last season. Did he say 20 goal a season striker? Did he say 20 million? Did he say 25 million? Whatever. Okay. But I know one thing that was promised. And that what was promised was that we were no longer going to sell our best players. That was the promise. I, I absolutely remember it. And that there's no way that you could use smoke and mirrors to portray that as anything but selling one of your best players. There is no other way of putting it. If you sell Winston Reid or Dimitri Payet and certainly Antonio, Aaron Cresswell, you are certainly selling one of your best players. And there's no way... That they would get away with it so for that reason i don't think they get away with it i don't think they're that silly to sell one of them and also i don't think chelsea want them so you know i i didn't i didn't believe it when i when i read it just touch on you saying uh they won't sell any of our best players i, I know he said I, he, he said that right but um every player has a price though he does he does have a price um what, what, all right, okay. Um, what would you think that would be? Okay, if that was the case, what do you think would tempt the board to sell Antonio? Not what would you accept? What do you think would tempt them? 25 billion, I think. Their bottom really? would cover a little bit. Yeah, I think 25. I've seen people say 40 and that, but I think I think if 25 came to the table, I think their bottom lip would cover a little bit. And they'd uh -huh. think, oh, hang on a minute. So. It's a lot of money here. I think they might even take lower than that. Um, I think maybe 20 million come to the table. I think they'd... I think their fingers would start to twitch a little bit, thinking, oh, we could get this here, 20 million for him, we could get that. We know he cost us 7 million, et cetera, which gave a goal that would be uh, chuffed with that resale value. Um, but for those that don't know, David Gold made a tweet in the week. Someone said about Defoe and David Gold said, David Gold's reply was, how much will Defoe be worth at age of 36? Which says a lot about them and their window, I think. But with Antonio, I think 20 million, I think the board would go, oh, oh hang on a minute. Uh, for me, I would, it's hard because every player does have a price. And like you, you just named his pros, right? And, he, and his cons are correct. He's not the best passer. He's not the greatest finisher with his feet. I mean, if you watch the goal he scored against Liverpool, oh my God, it was, it was, the, it was far from a clean strike. It went in. Do you remember yeah, his, first, his first ever goal? Do you remember his first ever goal? Also, it... Oh, it wasn't a clean strike. It, like he scuffed it completely, and he got a bit lucky because had Klein got that, we we would have all gone on him, going, "What on earth is that kind of shooting?" You know, he can't cross it to save his life either. But he's what we're missing right now from the rest of the team: hard work, graft. That's what we're missing from the other ten. But he's got it. But he, those pros that you named, though, when you were naming them. I was thinking, well, that is what Conte likes. He likes hard working. He likes people that will run into the ground for him. And I don't think he's technically good enough. Like, he's, he doesn't want to play wing back. So surely Conte wouldn't play there. But he's definitely not good enough to replace Pedro. Um, there's no way he can replace Pedro. But he does have the Oscar money. He does have the Oscar money burn a hole in his pocket. Um, Antonio over at Chelsea's got 60 million quid or something. Uh, Mikel's just left as well. I don't know how much 
he sold for, but I'd imagine it would be about 15 since he's gone over there as well. So he's got a lot of cash to play with. Um, and it makes sense. I can kind of, When I first seen the link, I thought, no, 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 he's not a Chelsea player. But then when you think about Antonio's pros, they do sort of fit with Antonio Conte's way. And Antonio Conte's got Victor Moses playing like a natural... Premier League player, an actual wing back, etc. Well, he's, he's, he's almost the opposite, isn't he, Moses? I mean, he is actually the polar opposite of Antonio because he has bags of technical ability and no work, work ethic or application. And he doesn't, actually, the one thing that Antonio really is good at is finding space. And that's a, I don't think that's a, you, I guess you can coach it, but some players just have it. And obviously, he played, he was playing for Tutin and playing non league. Antonio and clearly his coaches at that level he just naturally drifts into space and finds areas that are dangerous and peels off the back of defenders blah 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 uh, of course Moses didn't have that he's just got bags of technical ability if you were having a keepy up challenge or a crossbar challenge I'm sure Moses is winning most days but he's he just doesn't apply himself so yeah he's, he's actually the, the polar opposite but I mean I, number one I just don't think that there is any way they would get past it. If they think things are pretty bad in the media, social media, forums, videos are bad at the moment. I mean, for the owners and for the club, they try selling Antonio and see what happens then. It will not be pretty because there is no way they would have to bring in some special player to appease us. And you can't sell your top scorer if you're looking to uh, to sort of cement your place in the league for another season you do not sell your top scorer your only scorer he's our only scorer that's the that's the thing it's like if you were to take him out who would score you'd look around the team right now and think well i'm not sure he might he might he might but antonio's always got a goal in him and uh, i dismissed the link straight away when i read about it but when i when this link first came out it was like a month ago or something this link first came and uh, i dismissed it then since then i've sort of I've thought I've I've looked thought about it a bit more, and I've almost convinced myself that the move could happen. But I pray it doesn't. Um, good luck to you, though. Like you said, good luck to you. If you try and sell Antonio, that's going to be the last straw for a lot of people. I think. I think a lot of people think you know what I've had it with this board now. They, they they're losing support. They're, they've already lost a large. Well, they become awkward between fans and board. But I can't see him going anywhere. Um, but the Chelsea player that we are linked with. Some are saying it's part of the deal. A lot of people though are saying that's nothing to do with the deal. It's a separate deal. That's that's why coming on loan to us. Um, you really don't want him, do you? Oh, if we were to sign him permanently, I'd take him. But that's not what's being offered here. And we have had our fingers burnt with loans um, consistently. Actually, not just this season. You can look back to Jenkinson and Moses last season as well. You play extortionate fees for these guys. You pay their huge wages, and I'm struggling to think of anybody with the exception of Lanzini, which is different because he was he was playing out in a desert and desperate to to either return back to South America or come to Europe and make a name for himself. So there's more motivation. These people, Jenkinson just wants to go back to Arsenal. Moses just wants to go back to Chelsea. And that's why I would just want to go back to Chelsea. I'm pretty sure he'd be looking over there and thinking, oh, hoping Costa gets injured. And we know his heart wouldn't be with us because he's had the chance to join us and he chose to join Chelsea. So, and whilst there's nothing wrong with that, he wanted to play Champions League football and, uh, well, actually they're not anyway, are they? But, you know, he wanted to join a big club he's already shown is that, that that's what he wants to do so if he came here why would his attitude change he's still going to want to play for Chelsea so yeah if we were to sign him yeah but on loan I don't see it and also I'm not sure to what end it's like when we did our other show the other day and we were talking about sort of the season being over and, and I said I didn't understand you know I didn't think the season's over there's still lots to look forward to when I was saying there was lots to look forward to I meant there's sort of individual matches to look forward to and also particularly almost getting ready for next season seeing the youngsters come through seeing Oxford and seeing things like that I just think if you don't think we're going to qualify for the Champions League and you don't think we're going to get relegated I'm not sure what the purpose of bringing someone like Batshuayi over for four months is going to do anyway. I'd rather see Martinez brought in or some. Listen, don't get me wrong, I want us to sign another striker, but if what we were going to do, I would rather see um, Hogan on a on a permanent deal playing up front for us and hopefully getting better start next season than Batshuayi coming in for a few months with his, with his heart really still at Chelsea. That's just my opinion.
I've got no issues with him having his heart elsewhere. I don't blame him for going to Chelsea. Unfortunately, this might be unpopular, but they are the better club. They're in a better position. His his choice is going to be justified. Come May when he when he looks like he's going to get handed a Premier League winner's medal for his first year in England. His choice was justified. And next year he will be playing in the Champions League with them. Um, so I've got yeah, his heart will lie at Chelsea, but that's to me. I don't. I get it. I get why he did that. Um, I would also prefer a permanent striker. I don't really care who, to be honest. Just someone that Village can work with with one eye on next season a little bit. You know, there'd be nothing worse than building a team around Batshuayi, bangs in six goals and come May. Then in the summer, we have to go look for a striker again because the guy has just been scored in his way back to Chelsea. And then we're going to turn around to our players and say, oh, you have to get used to another striker because... Uh, the last guy's gone back. However, if it was a choice between Batch Y and nothing, I think I would take him purely because I don't think... While I've always said we're not in a relegation battle, I'm scared. I am a little bit scared because Saturday, Crystal Palace, we lose. We're really back in that. And the last thing I'd want is Carroll to get his crock. Um, it's going to happen at some point. Then we've only got Fletcher and Martinez and that is a situation I do not want to see West Ham in so for that we need a striker so Batshuayi comes on loan fair enough but just really hope we don't get our pants pulled down you know like a three million loan fee or something stupid like that for six months but it's desperate times every club knows we're desperate for a striker and they can pull our pants down for it they say well you want him you're gonna stump up that cash or give us the readies or you ain't getting him and we all know unfortunately we are we're learning the hard way in this window again we ain't paying the money. We're not paying the money. Um, it's it's frustrating, but you know we've spoke about it with Hogan, etc. Um, but the next guy is the big talking point. Before we talk about that, the one link came out today for a right back, which I haven't seen mentioned anywhere, is Martina at Southampton. His contract's out in the summer. He's a free agent in the summer. Um, so he's probably quite cheap. He's not getting a game at Southampton. So that Martina... <laughs> I think I think I think I'd like, he's a good right back though. I, I do like him. I've like perhaps I've only seen very little of him, but they've got they signed someone last summer who's now the first choice right back. So he's out of contract in the summer. He's not old either. He's not ancient, I don't think. So um, I'd happily see him. But 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 but, but tonight, um, Express Hand Poy did a show and said that Dimitri Payet will be leaving in the summer. Um, are you fed up a Payet yet? And you're wearing a Payet t-shirt, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, I won't take it off. It won't be nice. We'll lose subscribers. Yeah, un- um, under under Payet, does it say for now? <laughs> absolutely, yeah. It does It does say we've got Payet. I, I just don't think you understand it all that. Um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he left. Um it was a wonderful, it was like a, like a bit of a whirlwind romance, really, wasn't it? If that was the case, he came and we fell in love and then he he, he buggered off with somebody else who had a better car. But, um, well, that's ever happened. Um, I love my Skoda. Uh, no, I don't know. What can what can you say? It's uh, it's, it's, it's just getting me... I, I, I say it's getting me down. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I find it hard to get angry about West Ham, about football, unless I'm at the game. I'll get angry at the games in between. I just sort of left to laugh at the ridiculous nature of it all, really. Our times have changed, you know. We had such a bad transfer window, the last summer one, and then I really thought, we've done, we've had a bad transfer window. The club are going to recognise how bad it was and rectify it. And I see us linked with all these people and um, the centre-back, Fonte, or Font, or whatever his name is. You just, in all honesty, you've just named a right-back I've never even heard of. He could walk past me in Tesco's. I wouldn't have a clue who he was, right? And just, and, all right, I know, listen, I quite like, like Hogan, and, and, and it's a sort of throwaway comment, but, we're you know, we're linked to a couple of journeymen, the striker from Brentford, and I just think, my goodness, you know, gone are the days when, it wasn't that long ago we'd be in link with Lacazette and, and going for wait, a cardia into Milan and, and I just think what on earth is going on? And if we lose Dimitri Payet, are we really gonna get anyone else in that's any better? I doubt I don't I don't I don't think we'll I just don't think we're going this direction we're meant to be going in. I think signing journeyman players and then selling, you know, your top assist getter up, you know, over the last couple of seasons, it's just not the way to grow as a club. Where's he going, did he say? No, there's no, um, nothing. I'd imagine it's Marseille, given the... If he, if he has already decided he's leaving, given the 
things he's been saying about his former club and when we literally straight after we got beat by Man City, he favorited that tweet from someone telling him to come back to Marseille. He favorited it on Twitter and stuff, and all the signs point to him going back to Marseille. Um, tapping up happens left, right, and center across football these days, so it'd be very easy considering the amount of time he's in France anyway. And it's just little things like after the Man City game, he flew over to France to take a kick off in a friendly, or whatever. You know, it's little things like that. I think you're just being smashed. 5-0, the team should be regrouping and you're in France doing some sort of PR stunt and you just think, you know, just, there's a time and a place and after you've got beat 5-0 and all the fans are upset, that is not the time to go be doing things like that. But he, he does it and it's just, I think it's going to be Marseille. But what what, what um, I want to ask is, if he is going in the summer, would you not be better off just selling him now or do you hope that he sort of picks himself up and admits that he's going but he wants to have a, a romantic four months with us and get a standing ovation when he departs on the last game of the season against Liverpool London Stadium last home game of the season that he does his little lap of honour on his own if you like and gets sent away a hero thanks for the two years you've been the best player most of us have ever seen cheerio mate is um is Charlie watching this now and doing the tweets from the show and tweeting out our comments I don't know. He's he's do he's helping us out. Charlie's in the live right. chat. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hello, hello, Charlie. I, what I don't want to see is Charlie tweeting out. Gonzo says, "Get rid of Payet now." Okay, because what we're working on, we're working on the assumption that the story is true. Okay, so if this story is true, okay, and he is gonna go in the summer, then there is no point in him sticking around now. Okay, if it's if it's a if it's a story that's just a rumour, then no, I wouldn't want him to be sold at all. He is still our best player. There's, he is technically our best. He might not be applying himself or being formed, but as I said before, he's not the only one, is he? He's our best player. If a deal is already in place for him to go in the summer, there's absolutely no point in him staying. None whatsoever, because like I, I'm not, I'll be hypocritical. Otherwise, look what I said about Schwein. His heart would be elsewhere. His heart would be in Marseille. And there would be little or no point in him being here because... Whilst I still think he would have a, a delivery and an assist in him and, and possibly even a free kick or two, what's the point? Are we not better off just building and getting somebody in who would be more dedicated to the project, to use a horrible word? The problem is, my worry is that if, when we sell him, if it is January or the summer, the fans ain't got no faith we're going to see someone half decent come in. We're not even asking for a replacement for Payet because we all know we're not going to get someone as good. But the fans, the two, the one player that everyone wants is Sigurdsson from Swansea, which is understandable, right? But I would suggest going and getting him and Depay from Man U. You'd probably get them both for the same price as Payet and that way you've got a natural left winger and Depay. But the thing is, just we don't have faith that that's what would happen. The money would come in and everyone go, what are you going to do with it? And it would be, I don't know, we'd almost end up with Robert Snodgrass, you know, that would be like, ta-da, we've signed, we've signed the guy with the second most chances in the Premier League or whatever it is, he's quite high up, etc. Yeah, yeah, and like, and like John Walters, John Walters from Stoke and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they would yeah. dress it up, they would dress it up and tell us all these pros and then you'd, you'd mention it, you'd think, well, what, that's it, that's the replacement. You know, we ain't getting anyone to, good to, we're not going to get anyone who's on level pay it, we get it. No one's asking for that. But we're asking for someone that's good for West Ham. And I'm just not convinced we would get someone that's a little bit special for us. Like Sigurdsson to me. I think Sigurdsson would be, you know, a little bit special for us, but he's not out with our reach. He's not unrealistic. The problem that like I said, the problem I've got is a lack of trust. <sighs> I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm really trying to be positive. I've tried to stay positive because I do believe, um, and I still believe that the club knew what a terrible window they just had and they need to put it right. Um, and I'm still sort of clinging to that hope, really. But as each day ticks on, I don't get angry. I watch social media. I see people are angry, angry, angry. I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm not outraged. What I get is... Just a little bit more glum, a little bit more downbeat. You know what I mean? The shoulders sag a little bit each day. Um, and you're right about that, having 
that losing the faith that anything is going to be done. And what we need at the moment, we need a spark. We need an injection. Do you remember the other day when I said I almost felt like I needed a holiday, right? You know what I mean? We just had Christmas and we're still up for the season to go. But I almost felt like, actually, I could do me summer holidays now and come back and almost start again. When I say a change is as good as a rest, and I think we need, we just need a bit of a change. We need to, to, to freshen things up and get some new players in. Uh, just to give us all a lift and they need to do it we really do need to be buoyed up and it's certainly not with a right back that no one's ever heard of coming in and it's been a bit i'm not been great how quiet the talk has been on the right back we know we get linked with everybody if this you know there's in the nose all over the place if we go and scout a player everybody knows about it and it's slightly worrying now we've not been linked with with a right back but there you go. What more can I say? The thing, the thing with Payet though is, do you blame him for wanting to go? Do you think he actually owes West Ham a little bit because we took him from Liga One, or do you think that he's paid us back and then some just within one year at West Ham, and actually is our board's fault for not investing sufficiently in the summer to give him the team that he deserves around him to build for the immediate success? I mean, this guy in young. I think you have to remember he's not young. He can't wait until six years' time for us to be in the Champions League. He doesn't have that on his side. I can wait six years. You can wait six years. Everyone watching this can wait six years. Well, unless you're like 90, or then thank you for watching. And But, um, but like... So, don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. before you clock off, just... <laughs> the number, we need the numbers, please. Uh, but um, the thing is, though, we can all wait. Fans can wait six years, right? A debate. I'd argue that Bullets could probably wait six years, you know. But the players can't. There's some players in that squad that just can't wait six years. Dimitri Payet's at the top of that list. He's thirty soon. He, he's or he is thirty. I don't know. Is he thirty now or is he turned thirty? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Probably but, was twenty-nine. Um, he joined, wasn't he? I think. Oh, he's, no, he's yeah, he's thirty now. So if he's got, if he's, he doesn't have six years left at West Ham for us to build the project, etc. You know, because that's how long it's going to take for us to get into that Champions League. As I guess, with the current owners, and that's that's been kind. So I don't really blame Payet for wanting to go because in the summer we had to match his ambitions, as well as our own ambitions, not just the fans, but the actual club's ambitions, right? But we didn't. We had the chance, but we didn't do it. And I know it's hard to attract a top player, but that window, while it's only open for two months, is essentially three months long because you've got from May to you've got May and June anyway before the window opens, but. You've essentially got a three-month window, and we couldn't get in a, a striker or a right back. We're now a third into January transfer window, and there's not even, you know, Dimitri Pai has never heard of Scott Hogan. Dimitri Pai is thinking, well, who? Brentford striker? Who's Brent? What is Brentford? That's what Dimitri Pai is probably asking. What is Brentford? You know, it's. I don't really blame him for wanting out. To be honest, if it's true, I don't really blame him. Um. I'll, I'll never be able to prove this. Never, ever be able to prove this. But my hunch is that in the summer, and I've said this before, or whatever, just before the summer, when he signed his new contract on the improved terms, there was all the talk about him leaving. He was going to leave, wasn't he? Um, there was big money on offer, and he was going to leave. But then he signed a new contract, five-year contract, 125 grand a week, once the bonuses are taken into account. There's no way that when he was enticed to stay on that a conversation about other players coming in didn't happen. If you remember at the time, there were a load of sort of flirtatious texts between him and Lacazette. They were favouriting each other and, and doing all that sort of stuff, liking and all, all that other stuff. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they had a meeting and said, look, Demi, we're going to pay you this money. Here's your money. Here's the contracts you want. And we are going to build the team around you. Not only are we going to build the team around you, we are going to sign this sort of player. We're going to go and sign your mate, Lacazette. And if we can't get your mate, Lacazette, we're going to go and get your mate, Batshuayi. And if we can't, we are going to bring in players of that calibre. I've no doubt that that conversation happened. So I just make you right pretty much in everything you said now then what you've got to do is you've got to wonder if they did try and get those players. And if they did, and there's no reason to disbelieve, Marseille wouldn't have lied. Marseille said that they that we bid 
for batch Y, 30 odd million. So they're not going to help us with a lie. But it was it was almost too little. It was almost too late. The same with the Lacazette. We flirted with a Lacazette. Lacazette was available for 42 million. They said 42 million. And I just wonder if we wouldn't have been better. And I've said this consistently. Rather than building that squad for Europe, we would have just been better out and going out and buying a couple of players for 35 million each or a, a 40 million pound player or something like that. And I think that was probably what was promised to him. And um, they tried to dress up the Gok and Torre deal as much as that. But Gok and Torre had got nine assists in the Turkish league last season. We all know what I think about that league. Zaza, I believe, scored five goals last season. Um, got dropped from the national team. So it was spinning. Oh, he's an, you, you can tell any story how you want. So you can say... Um, you know, Gokhan Torre is one of Turkey's best players. Um, all right, yeah, you could say that. You can also say what I just said. You could turn around and say we're signing an international striker. Um, it, one of Italy's top strikers. I guess you could say that, but it, it's not really true, is it, in Zaza? So I think what was promised and what actually transpired were two very different things. And I wouldn't be surprised if you thought, hold on a second, this is not what it said in the brochure. What I will say, though, on the flip side, away from what Payet thinks, as a fan, I think he's quite disrespectful to an extent. I think he's quite... I remember doing a show with you not long ago. I said, I'm not surprised anymore when he pops up praising a team, praising something, hinting that he might leave. It doesn't surprise me anymore. But at the same time, it still pisses me off a little bit. I just think, can you not just keep your gob shut? Like, if you want to go to Marseille, fine. You can do it discreetly. You can like Marseille, though. You can like West Ham, though. You'd have to go into a French magazine or whatever and spout off about it. Well, why are you doing that? Why can't you not just zip it and let your football <laughs> to the talk? It, little things like that it just does my head in a little bit. Have, have you seen his car? Yes, I've seen his car. He's got a bright yellow Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, that answers your questions whether he can be discreet or not. But yeah, it's, but that's different, you know. That's like materialistic <laughs> and show offy. It's a joke. It's, talk, it's a joke. It's a joke. I'm talking about yeah. Well, so is Dimitri Payet's attitude towards West Ham fans. Um, but I'm talking about him just giving us respect because the fans have done nothing but treat him like a hero. They they treat him. They've worshipped at the ground he walks on since day one. I just think sometimes that he's just a little bit too disrespectful for my liking. Um, what sort of price would you accept for him? Bear in mind that if he wants out, the world's going to know about it. We kind of already do. His age, he's not exactly been on fire this season. Yes, his stats say that he's created the most chances in Europe, that he's done the most key passes, he's done the most crosses, whatever. But looking at his performances as a fan that watches him every game, every minute, he's not turned up. Um, as much this season. He's not hit the dizzy heights that he's set for himself. He's almost his own worst uh, victim a little bit. He's his own worst enemy with the standards he set last year and at the Euros. He set the bar so high. There was no way he was going to reach it again. But he's quite far off it and he's probably a little bit too far off it to be in the elite of Europe, which we considered him to be last year. Yeah, well, he's still um, a little bit in luck. Um, and I guess our if our board are looking to sell him, then they are as well in terms of his transfer value because he was recently um, nominated for the Ballon d'Or. He finished ranked the 17th best player in the world and his France performances are still decent and that will keep him certainly on an international stage in the public eye and demonstrating that he can still score a long-range goal and create lots of assists. So whilst I accept what you're saying, his performances at West Ham might have depreciated his value. Um, he probably retains a bit of value due to his, his international pedigree, basically. Um, in terms of price, it's very, very hard to say. I, I didn't know you were going to ask about Payet. I didn't know about that, that rumour, actually. Um, so the last thing I expected to do would be to be sat here talking about how much I'd accept for Payet. I think everything taken into account, age, form, international recognition. I think we'd be, I think you'd be getting twenty five million from. I would like to think we can maybe squeeze a little bit more out of him, but just it's more because of reputation. You're almost buying the name Dimitri Pai as well. It's become a bit of a household name, like Paul Barbale, etc. You know, um, sometimes I think the name does bump the price up a little bit. That 
you know, if you were to go get a Shane Long, it's not quite as fashionable as going I, again. I, I, I have a Shane Long t-shirt running off now. But, but, but you know what I mean, though? When it comes to buying players, sometimes there is almost like a, a fashion and a popularity price tag added a little bit. Oh, but he sells X amount of shirts for you. You've got to pay a little bit extra for that, etc. Um, but it's just a shame, isn't it, that we went into the summer full of hope and in January we were talking about Antonio going to Chelsea, Payet wants out, and uh, we're going to buy a Brentford striker. It's just out of the mighty of falling. But, you know, it's it's what January transfer window is all about. It's a seller's market, it, unless you're West Ham United, unfortunately. Um, those that don't know, the insider column on the West Ham official site will be no more. Gonzo's favourite weekly read is gone. Um, Callum mm-hmm. Brady said that the insider will not return at any point. Hallelujah, victory for the fans, except Gonzo. <laughs> um, but is there anything else, any news or rumours that you want to discuss? No, I, it's, it's just been too quiet, really, hasn't it? And anything that has been discussed has been sort of bad news isn't it and everything's very very down we need we need some good news and but we we can't just make it we can't just sit here and talk about good news that's not happening we need something and i'll tell you what we can start by winning and get our, our previews up tomorrow for anybody else it's well put it up at midday tomorrow won't we that's all all ready to go now we've already filmed that and um yeah we could we do have some good news and we can start by beating Sam Allardyce. You can hear more about that and some very choice opinions um, in tomorrow's preview. Well, they say no news is good news unless you're a West Ham United fan. No news just means there's just no news. Um, but thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and give us your thoughts in the comment below or over on our forum at hammerschat.com. We will... Like Gonza said, our preview's up Thursday at noon. So if you're watching us after Thursday at noon, you know what to do. Straight now, go watch the preview for the Crystal Palace game. On Saturday night, we will have a review up of the Palace game. Hopefully, it's will be in three points. On Sunday, you'll have our vlog. And at some point, we will have another cup of tea with Joe Gonza talk about all the latest West Ham news and transfers. But keep your eyes on our social media for when that is, because sometimes we do it spontaneously. Just like sometimes David Sullivan decides to spontaneously bid for a player usually about half the price he's actually worth. But thank you for joining us once again.